Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this service of worship on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning in June, this Trinity Sunday. Um, I would like to share with you a couple of announcements today. For those of you who may not know me, I am Bruce Nelson, the uh, president of the Western District of the Moravian Church and also a former pastor. As I look out, I think almost all of you know me, but I see a couple of faces that I don't know. Um, so either I'm forgetting who you were or uh, perhaps you joined the church after, after I left. Um, I am here this morning because Pastor Dave and, and his entire family um, went back to Minnesota for the funeral of a very dear friend of theirs, um, Lisa Ray Skalicki. That funeral was yesterday, and uh, so David asked if I could preach this weekend, and indeed I said I could. Normally I don't like to draw attention to myself, but uh, um, I, I uh, put my wardrobe on today. My, my wife uh, did not help me, and I realized that this shirt probably doesn't go with this tie, which probably doesn't go with these pants, but I'm wearing my brewer tie today, and I need to tell you that I, whenever I wear it, they lose, so I'm trying reverse psychology. For those of you who aren't brewer fans, They've lost eight in a row in nine of their last ten, and it has made this pastor not very happy. In fact, I think I'm about uh, ready for grief counseling. Um, but I'm wearing the tie today for reverse psychology because I figure normally they lose when I wear it, so I'll wear it to see if they win. Unfortunately, I will tell you that I tried that yesterday and they still lost. But enough about me. Um, I'd like to uh, share with you some announcements today. Um, uh, once again this year, we will have a parade in the Town and Country Days, or, or we'll have a float. We're not going to have a whole parade. We will have a float in the Town and Country Days parade, um, which is two weeks from yesterday. And so if you would be willing to be one of the walkers for the float, um, that would be greatly appreciated. You can check in with the office uh, or Crossman's, and um, we don't know yet where the, the lineup is for the parade, uh, but we should be getting that information relatively quickly. Also, the sweat, sweatshirts, if you had ordered a sweatshirt, I am told that they are in and they can be picked up. Also, there are some tiger lilies and irises um, that apparently are uh, to be given away um, from Dina's garden. If you would be interested in getting one of those, uh, they are in the church uh, garage, and uh, you can get one of those following worship today. And it may be more than tiger lilies and irises, but that's what I was told. Um, the booklet for church camp is out, and so if, there, uh, if you, uh, children, grandchildren, are interested in one of our church camps, this can be picked up on the table in the entryway, and we would encourage you to do so. Um, the famous line, if you feed them, they will come. Uh, we're going to find out if that's true or not, because next Saturday following worship uh, on the 18th, um, brats and hot dogs are going to be cooked. And so if you're interested in, uh, in that, show up for worship at 4 o'clock and stay for a brat or something like that afterwards. You can have my brat, because I will be in uh, out east flying back from out east next Saturday, so I won't be able to, to join you. There are several other announcements listed in your bulletin. I would encourage you to support those with your prayers and or attendance. Um, are there any other announcements that I should be making this morning? Hearing none, let us join together in our opening hymn, number 381, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament, Exodus 19 and part of 20. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephapan, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. And the gospel lesson is from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. May God add his, to our hearing and understanding of his holy word. We come now to a time in our worship when we have an opportunity to bring our joys and concerns before the Lord. Um, I would encourage us to keep in prayer the family of Lisa Ray Skalicki, and the family and friends of Lisa Ray. Also, there was a horrific accident in our area near Waterloo earlier this week, um, and a young 14-year-old girl, uh, her last name is Marty, and I believe her first name is Kate. Um, passed away as a result of that accident um, and some others I believe sustained injuries but uh, Kate at this point um, has passed away um, so let us keep the Marty family in our thoughts and prayers um, also I noticed that in the bulletin um, there are some names listed for prayer concerns and now as I say that I can't find them um, uh, they were listed last night anyway. Um, one of them was for Glenn and Marilyn Bilkey, and they were actually in worship last night. And uh, uh, Larry Fani, who was actually in worship last night. Are there other joys or concerns to share at this time? Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you this day with many things upon our minds. We pray, Lord, for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We think specifically today of the Stowicki family. And we ask, Lord, that you would wrap your loving arms around them and they would feel your love and your presence amongst them. We pray also, Lord, for the Marty family and for, for others who were injured in that accident earlier that, uh, last week. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them and that your presence would be felt in a very special way amongst them. We pray, Lord, for those who are still recovering from the dreadful school shootings. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with parents, uh, grandparents, friends, neighbors, those for whom uh, this terrible tragedy continues to uh, have rippling effects. We ask, Lord, that you would be with our school students as they appreciate their summer vacation, that you would give rest and relaxation to our teachers and school staff. We pray, Lord, for those who are in need of your healing touch, 
We think of those who are listed in our bulletin as well as others. We ask, Lord, that you would be with doctors and nurses as they care for them, family members as they wait upon them, and with those individuals who, whom we have listed and those perhaps who have not been mentioned. Lord, we have mentioned many things this morning, and yet perhaps you are aware of things upon our hearts that have not been mentioned. Hear us now as we silently offer those to you. We pray this all in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. Let us continue our worship by singing together hymn number 380, God whose almighty word. I bring you greetings this morning on behalf of the Provincial Elders Conference and the Western District Executive Board, where we serve 30 congregations in seven states. And whenever I get an opportunity to speak in a, uh, a, a congregation, I share with the congregations the, sort of an update on the call process in our district. We currently have three congregations who are seeking pastors and have been for over a year. Um, we have a significant clergy shortage. Um, we have no uh, candidates who graduated from seminary this year, and we have two who will be graduating next year, and actually both of them are already serving a church, so it's not like we can uh, you know, fill a church by having their graduation. Why do I say all of that? I say all of that because pastors are, or future pastors are nurtured and um, encouraged in local congregations. And so I would encourage you, A, to be praying for individuals to consider ordained ministry, but B, to also be looking um, within the, the walls of the Lake Mills Moravian Church, is there someone whom you think the Lord may be calling to ordain ministry, and I would encourage you to encourage them and to nurture them in that call. So we begin a series over the next, I believe it's four weeks, on the Ten Commandments. 
Today is the first week in this series, and in many ways I'm relieved that I start the series off because if I forget to point anything out or if I mess something up, Pastor Dave can cover for me in the next three weeks. I need to share with you that I have done very little preaching from the Old Testament. Most of my preaching that I have done is, is from the New Testament. So this is a good thing today. It is stretching me. And any time we can, we can be stretched, that is a good thing for all of us. Pastor Dave, if you haven't figured this out yet, likes to tell jokes. And I would not want you to miss that in his absence. So I have a question for you. Do you know, we, we all, uh, many of us anyway, carry a, a laptop computer or an iPod or iPad or some sort of tablet in, um, you know, in amongst us. My daughter was actually at a, a worship service uh, last week and the pastor was actually preaching from her phone. So rather than having a, a manuscript, she had her phone and was scrolling, you know, various things. So here's my question for you. Do you know historically who received the first message on their tablet? Moses, absolutely. Moses actually had two tablets. And so historically, way before computers or iPods or iPads or whatever any of those things are, Moses uh, received the first message on the tablet. Now the Ten Commandments can be found in two places in the Old Testament. They can be found in the book of Exodus, which Jane read for us a bit earlier, but they can also be found in Deuteronomy 5. The Old Testament reading that we're talking about today has two main points. The first point is that the first tablet of the law can be summarized, love the Lord your God. And the second tablet of the law can be summarized, love your neighbor as yourself. I think we live in a world today where that sometimes wonders, why do we have rules and regulations? Why do we have to wear a seatbelt? Why do we have to go a certain speed limit? More recently, why do we have to wear masks? Why do, um, lots of people will look at these rules and regulations as a way for someone or some organization to control us or to take away our freedoms. I have seen parents with young children and actually, I was one of those parents with young children several years ago who would force their children to hold an adult's hand when crossing a busy street. But as we think about that, isn't that a form of stifling our children? Taking away their freedoms? Taking away their sense of independence? Uh, stifling their ability to, to explore the world around them? Well, one could certainly make that assertion, I would like to think that many of the laws and rules and regulations that are put in place are put there to protect us. And not only to protect us, but also to protect our neighbors. In my preparation for today, I looked at the notes of Dr. Rolf Jacobson, the professor of Old Testament and the Alvin and Rognes Chair in Scripture, Theology, and Ministry at Luther Seminary in St. Paul. You don't have to remember all of that. Just know that I took notes, or I looked at notes, from Dr. Jacobson. And Dr. Jacobson had this to say about the Exodus passage. The start of Exodus 20, verses 1 and 2, what most Christians refer to as the prologue to the Ten Commandments, but which Jews consider the first word, scores the same point. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Here's the important thing. God does not just come with a set of rules and regulations and say, here, do these. Rather, God first establishes a relationship with us. Only after the relationship has been established, then does God make a claim on our behavior. Now there are two crucial points here. Two things about the law that are good to know. 
The first is that God does not give the law as a means to salvation. To use the law to earn salvation, to win your soul's way to heaven, is like trying to build a faster than the speed of light spaceship or time travel machine out of plywood. It's just not possible. And neither is it possible to earn salvation through the law. God does not give the law as a way to establish relationship with people. God establishes the relationship first and then gives the law. This leads us to the second point about the law. And that second point is, it isn't about us, per se. God does not give you and me the law in order to per perfect us, or even to make us a better you or me. The law is not about us. It is about our neighbors. God gives you the law, not so that you can become more spiritual and have the best life now, but that, but that your neighbor will be able to have his or her best life now. So do you notice how many times God made this point in the Ten Commandments? Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Do not covet anything that is your neighbor's. Do not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's spouse. When it is the day of rest, make sure that all of your neighbors, from your sons and daughters, right on down to your sheep and oxen, get to rest just like you do. And oh, by the way, the elderly, honor your father and mother. They are all neighbors. Dr. Jacobson, in his commentary on Exodus 20, says one last point. The Ten Commandments are for free people, for people who, whom God had freed. Hear again those words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. I bore you on eagle's wings. These commandments are not meant to limit our freedom by telling us what things we are not free to do, although that certainly is a part of it. These commandments are what lives freed in Christ look like. In order to love God's law, we must also remember that through Christ's death and resurrection, we have been freed from the power of sin. And now that we are free, the law shows us what that free life looks like. So we have the Ten Commandments. And I am absolutely convinced that if Pastor Dave was here, he would now be saying, because I've heard him say this, these are not the ten suggestions or the ten good ideas. Rather, they are the ten commandments. You're going to hear much more about them in the coming weeks. But it is important that we remember that these ten commandments were given in love to keep us free and to help us and our neighbors to be our best selves. And then I have this grandpa story, which I have tried all week to, to figure out how I could fold it into the sermon. And I really don't think it, it, uh, it has anything to do with the sermon, but it's too good of a story not to share. So my wife and I, on the days surrounding Memorial Day, were in Minnesota caring for our 21-month-old grandson, Corbin. Corbin's parents, my son and his wife, uh, had gone off to, to North Carolina for a wedding and then a couple of days of vacation after the wedding. It is the first time that Corbin had been without his parents overnight. Uh, occasionally my son was gone, but then mom was there. And, when, and one time mom was gone, but my son was there. But this was the first time neither mom nor dad were there. And uh, so we got to care for Corbin. And... Um, it was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed our time. We did realize that we're not as young as we were when we had our own children, and so um, we tired, but that was okay. Corbin, as many uh, younger children do, has a bedtime routine, and so every time before putting Corbin to bed, my wife would read him a couple of books and then sing him some songs. And there is no magic formula for what those books need to be or what the songs need to be. They just need to be a couple of songs. So one time, my wife decided that she was going to sing, Jesus Loves Me. And you need to understand that Corbin had no idea what he was saying 
In fact, his motivation for saying this was he didn't want her to be done singing because he didn't really want to go to bed yet. He wanted uh, her to hang around a little bit longer. So she gets done singing, Jesus loves me, and Corbin says, Nana, more Jesus. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, innocently, this boy understands what we all need to figure out. And that is that all of us need more Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your messengers that sometimes come in the form of a 21-month-old child who has no clue what they're saying. We thank you, Lord, that you have established a covenant, a relationship with us before giving us commandments that help us to, to be better people. Help us, Lord, to remember that those commandments are tied up in the word love. And we are aware of your love for us, and we are aware that we ought to be loving others. And so, Lord, as we continue in this series, as we hear more about the commandments, help us to remember that they were given in love and that they were given so that we may love and that we would realize that we need more Jesus. Continue to be with us and bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing together hymn number 386, Holy God, we praise your name.
Today is indeed Trinity Sunday, and so you may have noticed that some of the hymns that we've sung have dealt with that theme, and also we pray together the Trinity litur Liturgy, which can be found on page 100. Just a word or two about the songs. The, the first one we are going to be omitting. If you look over on page 102 or in 103, there are things that say voice or choir. You are the voice or choir, all of you. So page 100. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of your glory. You are worthy to receive glory, honor, and power. You created all things, and by your will you brought them forth. To you, the one who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be praise and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. Triune God, we acknowledge the profound mystery of your being, beyond our comprehension, three in one, one in three. Yet what we could never know by ourselves, you have revealed to us, through your word and your mighty works, through Jesus Christ and the presence of your spirit, you have made yourself known. You offer the gracious gift of eternal life, Eternal life is to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. As we bow before you, holy God, we confess our unholiness and receive your word of forgiveness. Gracious God, we confess our sin, which separates us from you. We know how people who belong to you should live, who fail to live that way. We have done evil and have failed to do good. We have lived for self rather than for our, our, our neighbor. Thus our lives are diminished, our witness is stifled, and your image in us is tarnished. Forgive us, good Lord, through Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, guide us to live as people who know and love you. The Lord who saves you says, I am the God who forgives your sins. I do this because of who I am. I will not hold your sins against you. who seeks loving relationships with all whom he has created. Like a mother, God has nurtured us all our days and has been near in time of trouble. Praise the Lord, and do not forget how kind God is, who forgives our sins and redeems us from the grave, who blesses us with steadfast love and tender mercy, who fills our lives with good things, so that our youth is renewed by the eagles. We know God as Jesus Christ, the Word who became a human being and lived among us, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is one with God and is at the Father's side. He has made God known. God created the whole universe through him and for him. Christ existed before all things, and in union with him all things have their proper place. 
Jesus was humble, but the path of obedience, all the way to death, even death on the cross. For this reason God raised him to the highest place above, and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so, in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will fall on their knees, and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. the Holy Spirit, who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive the Spirit because it cannot see or know Him. But we know Him because the Spirit remains with us and is in us. God's Spirit joins with our spirits to declare that we are God's children. The Holy Spirit is the Helper who stays with us forever. Because we are God's children, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who cries out, Father, my Father. Like a mighty wind, like a blazing fire, the Holy Spirit comes upon us and fills us with power, making us witnesses for Christ to the neighborhood, to the nation, and to the ends of the earth. to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge and see and so be filled with all the fullness of God it is through Christ that all of us are able to come in the one spirit into the presence of the father please stand and it says that after the liturgy is the benediction. The benediction is actually the last words of the liturgy, and so I'm not going to, I, I guess this is mostly for you, Cora, don't wait for me to do another benediction because you'll be waiting until next week when Dave gets here. <laughs> and now unto him who by God's power within us was able to do far more than we ever dare to ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church through Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen.